The Senate gavels in today with our annual defense bill still unpassed. With less than one week remaining of government funding and less than two weeks left until our hard stop for the holidays on February the 23rd. <clears throat> That's the bad news, but the good news is that both sides have a clear understanding of what it takes to finish our work on a bipartisan basis. First, Senators Inhofe and Reid and their House counterparts have hashed out a strong bipartisan National Defense Authorization Act. The Senate should turn to it as soon as possible. But of course, Congress authorizes the tools, training, and equipment that our armed forces need will accomplish very little if we fail to then provide the actual funding. Both sides know what it would take for the Senate to pass a full year government funding bill into law. There's no mystery here. A funding agreement would need to fully fund our national defense at the level written into the NDAA without, without lavishing extra funding beyond what President Biden even requested onto Democrats' partisan domestic priorities. <clears throat> In other words, to not go beyond what the president asked for earlier this year on the domestic side. Our Democratic colleagues have already spent two years massively, massively increasing domestic spending using party line reconciliation bills outside the normal appropriations process. So clearly our colleagues cannot now demand even more, more domestic spending than President Biden even requested in exchange <clears throat> for funding <clears throat> the United States military. <clears throat> Funding our national defense is a basic governing duty. The Commander-in-Chief's own party does not get to demand a pile of unrelated goodies in exchange for doing their job and funding our armed forces. If House and Senate Democratic colleagues can accept these realities in the very near future, we may still have a shot at assembling a full year funding bill that will give our military commanders the certainty they need to invest, plan, and stay competitive with rivals like China. If our Democratic colleagues can't accept those realities, the option will be a short-term bipartisan funding bill into early next year. Now, on a related matter, events from Europe to Asia to, to the Middle East continue to demonstrate on a daily basis why American global strength and leadership are essential for protecting our homeland, our core interests, and our allies and partners. But unfortunately, Senator Sanders from Vermont has drafted a resolution that would put America back from, pull America back from global leadership in a clumsy and deeply counterproductive way. Our colleague has prepared a resolution attempting to further limit America's support for the UN-recognized government in Yemen and the Saudi-led coalition helping defend it against Iranian-backed Houthi terrorists. I welcome debate about American policy toward Iran, and that's what this resolution is really about, not Yemen, but Tehran. There's no question about Tehran's role in the fighting in Yemen from the very beginning, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is intimately involved. Less than one month ago, the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard stopped a wooden sailing vessel heading from Iran to Yemen and found 70, 70 tons of missile fuel component that Iran was trying to sneak to the terrorist rebels. This on top of countless small arms, UAVs, and rockets that Iran has provided to support Houthi terror. Iran has long seen the fight in Yemen as a way to expand its influence and tighten its grip on regional power. There's little question that an Iran-backed Houthi victory over the UN-recognized government of Yemen <clears throat> would be bad news for American interests in the region and interests of our close partners. Iran and their Houthi partners want a platform to launch indiscriminate terrorist attacks against civilian cities in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, against ships belonging to Israel and other internationally flagged vessels. 
The Iranians will continue to use Yemen as a testing site for the same kinds of weapons that Iran has long used to target and kill American forces in Iraq and Syria. The same kinds of weapons Iran is now also providing to Russia to rain death and destruction on Ukraine. This is just about the worst imaginable time the United States Congress could go out of our way to alleviate the pressure that Tehran and its Houthi proxies, proxies are feeling. A fragile ceasefire in Yemen is on the line. Why send a signal that we're backing away from our partners? Why embolden the Houthis at this juncture? Just as the Iranian people themselves are fed up and have been fighting back against their country's oppressive regime, Senator Sanders wants to cut Tehran a huge break. If the United States inflicts this kind of self-inflicted wound <clears throat> on our Middle East strategy, Iran will celebrate. Russia will pop champagne. China will enjoy more oxygen to expand its own creeping regional influence as well. And America's allies and partners will be left questioning our resolve, our partnership, and wondering if it wouldn't be safer bet to turn toward Beijing instead. Yemen is also home to the wing of Al Qaeda that poses the greatest threat to the United States. Don't take my word for it. <clears throat> President Biden's Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, has publicly warned about the threat from AQAP in Yemen. <clears throat> We rely on the UN-recognized government in Yemen, as well as key partners in the region like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, to keep pressure on al-Qaeda on multiple fronts. <clears throat> Do we really want to send a signal to partners on whom we can rely that they cannot rely on us? I've been critical of the Biden administration's mistakes in the Middle East and its passivity in the face of Iranian aggression, but even this administration strongly strongly oppose Senator Sanders' resolution. The Senate has enough crucial business to tackle this week without going out of our way to make life better, better for our enemies and harder for our partners. <clears throat>